Hi all, in this video we're going to take a look at how to create a kind of school of fish uh, following a locator around a curve. Um, it's pretty simple and it won't take us very long, so let's get going. Um, so in this scene here, I have three fish and if I play, um, you'll see that they've got their fins animating. Very simple, uh, very, very easy. Um, yeah, so let's get going. Uh, let's extend this animation range out to say 300 frames and let's select our three fish and create a mesh network like so. And because we have three objects selected, we get three points in our mesh network. Let's increase that to say 30, and then we're going to turn off the distribution. When you go, when you're going to use the flight node, uh, which is the flocking and schooling kind of node, uh, simulation node in uh, Mash, um, you don't want any distribution on the distribute node. Um, if you want, you can add a signal node, which uh, in previous versions of Maya you had to add a noise node before you added the flight node. Uh, that's no longer the case. You don't have to do that. You can just go straight ahead and add a flight node, which is what we're going to do here. However, you can still add a signal node, which is the replacement for noise. Um, and if if you add a signal node, uh, you will get um, kind of more of a swarming effect, which is, you know, kind of if that is artistically what you're after, then that's great. You can do that. Uh, so if you're going to do something like a swarm of midges or something like that, then you could simulate that just by adding a, a signal node before the flight node. It kind of keeps, it stirs up the simulation. Um, so anyway, let's just go and add our flight node. And I'm going to turn off the display, first of all. And then I'm going to turn off the grid and hit play. Whoops, not play backwards. So as you can see, um, our fish all look dead, um, and that's because they're all rotated the wrong way uh, in the um, in the world. So um, Y is up on the flight notes. I'm just going to um, rotate these all so that they're like that and then if I rewind and play they kind of face the right way um, so uh, a few things uh, to do here the simulation is all a bit wrong and um, they're gonna be trying to interact like their murmuration or something like that which isn't what we want so they're gonna be turning changing direction a lot and all that kind of thing so um, let's play with some settings and um, to get the, the kind of thing that we're after um, so I'm uh, if you remember in the play blast um, they're all following a locator around a curve so let's do that uh, part of the setup uh, now. So let's just grab this curve and then create a locator. And then if I select the curve and the locator and then go constrain, motion path, attach to motion path. By default, what will happen is um, the locator, which is here, um, as you can see there, uh, will be animated traveling around the curve um, for the length of the playback here, so the playback range, so it's 300 frames and so it takes 300 frames for the locator to go around the motion path. You can of course edit that in the graph editor which is, uh, well we're going to just change the interpolation here, so I'm going to grab this and make it linear and then get rid of that. Uh, yep, so there we go. So how do we make the fish head for the locator and follow it. Well, it's pretty easy. Uh, on the flight node, there is a roll down for attractor controls. If we just go down in here, I say um, attractor objects here, and then it says accept transform. Well, a locator is a transform, so we can just middle mouse drag that and drop it onto here. And then if we hit rewind and play, nothing happens uh, because um, our attraction distance is too low. So if I set this to 250 and then hit play, they still aren't. Oh, they're kind of, they're a little bit more interested. They're not that enthusiastic though. Let's try 350. Um, rewind and play. And I'm going to up the strength here a bit to make them follow it a bit more enthusiastically. And just going to maybe turn that down a touch. So just, you know, playing with the settings until I get what I'm after. So they're kind of following it, but they're um, they're catching up with the locator, and I don't want them to catch up with the locator. Um, so what I can do is, under speed and mass here, I can set a maximum speed, and I'm going to set that to say four units. And then if I hit play, they're going to they're going to be limited in how quickly they can go. Um, they're still darting a bit quickly, so let's just change that to three, and then hit rewind and play, and then watch the sim go. And they're going to yeah, they're following less enthusiastically. In fact, <laughs> a little bit too slow. Play with this until you get what you want. Um, okay, cool. So, um, as you can see, there's a few weird rotation things happening. Now, um, it's actually, uh, there's the rotation controls on the flight node here. Your mileage with these may vary until we get a couple of bugs fixed. But um, 
Uh, suffice to say, higher numbers here mean smoother rotations. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, however, I'm going to add an orient node, and I'm going to use that to orient the fish uh, to the direction of travel. So you add an orient node, and then you just change the orient mode to velocity, and then check smooth rotations. And then if I rewind and hit play, does the fish get going? We've got kind of what we're after. So um, the fish aren't the movement of the fish isn't really as interesting as I'd like. So I'm just going to go and uh, uh, play just a tiny little bit with the main controls here. So the three biggest um, attributes that are going to affect the look of your simulation are the separation control, alignment strength, and cohesion strength. Sorry, separation strength, uh, alignment strength, and cohesion strength. And what these three do, if you're unfamiliar with flight, separation uh, strength is going to control how um, determined the fish are to stay away from each other. The alignment strength is how determined the fish are to travel in the same direction as each other. And then the cohesion strength is um, going to keep them together as a group. So if one of them wanders off, uh, this is going to be like how enthusiastically it zooms back into the group kind of thing. Um, and then, uh, well, just for just because uh, while I'm here, I might as well go through a couple of others. The search distance is how, um, how closely it will look for other fish to pay attention to uh, when it's um, wanting to go into the same uh, direction as them or when it's looking for the center of the group um, it could, the number of companions here is uh, like when inside the search distance how many uh, fish or objects boids whatever we should um, take into account and in real life this number should be set to something like seven for birds because they can really only pay attention to um, only a few other birds around them uh, but I've got this set to 50 as a default uh, it's just uh, artistically I, I like the look of it um, and then the field of vision is you know the angle of view for the um, for the for the fish so basically they're only seeing things that are in front of them um, which kind of means that the leaders of the group sometimes kind of wander off or whatever and yeah it kind of creates a more natural uh, look so uh, you can increase this you can increase this to 360 degrees if you want them to all be able to look all around them um, as I'm sure some birds can and yeah so and then you know you've got minimum speed maximum speed so you can keep things moving and uh, yeah so lots of settings to play there there's some good documentation have a read of that if you want to um, anyway so we're all good on uh, oh no I was gonna play with the setting wasn't I so I'm just gonna increase the separation strength up to four um, and they're just gonna try and keep away from each other a little bit more which is gonna just create a little bit more of an interesting uh, movement amongst them okay so um they're they're doing a little bit of a turnaround and uh, kind of like playing amongst themselves kind of thing um which is fine it's not really what i want i'm actually gonna gonna change the man maximum speed back up to four again um so also you've noticed that they were all kind of rotating they were all kind of rotating from the middle of the fish which isn't really the right rotation point uh, and that's because if i hit control one here to um, frame that. Uh, you see that the pivot points for the fish are all in the middle of the fish, and actually they should probably be more towards the back of the fish. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna cheat here. I'm going to, um, going to be really lazy about this, and I'm just gonna move everything up so slightly. So uh, basically, the centre of the groups now is going to be further down the body of the fish, which is going to make for a nicer. Um, uh, rotation point so like a pivot point it's just kind of like cheating way of moving the pivot point so let's hit rewind let's hit play and then um yeah uh i'm gonna stop it right here you notice that they're not animating at the moment and also there's only one type of fish so let's fix that we need to add an id node to get our three different kinds of fish so when you add an id node it goes over and scans the repro node or the instance that sees how many objects are there and then sets the id count automatically so if you add more items to the repro or the instance you're going to need to change the setting manually uh, let's just change it so let's just randomize this a little bit so we get the kind of the fish well distribution that we want whatever uh that's fine and then um yeah Yes, what else do we need to do? We need to get these things animated. So if we add a time node, which is how you animate things with the repro mesh. So these are a mesh, so you can deform these. These are render agnostic. This is, um, yeah, this is, an, uh, this is actual geometry with uh, verts. Um, so if you're using the instancer, the way to do this would be uh, through ID cycling, um, which is um, a really old fashioned, very 90s way of animating things. Um, <clears throat> 
So that's why I'm using the repro. It's a little bit slower, but you j it's just nicer to work with. So when I have the time node here, everything's going to slow down quite a lot because instead of um, uh, just reading the meshes once, uh, it's going to be reading the meshes once for every object, which is just going to slow everything down. So uh, just be aware of that. The time node is kind of slow, but really easy to get um, cool looking stuff. So uh, our animation was 90 frames long. I don't know if you remember from the beginning. And then it's going to loop. Um, I want them to be staggered so they're not all kind of starting on the same frame. So they're not all kind of wagging their fins. They're not all flipping. They're not all <laughs> animating um, at the same time. So there's a bit of random offset there. Um, I don't really need to put random stagger on because they're randomly placed, but I'm going to do that just for effect. So if I press play now, you see that everything's kind of slowed down a little bit, but they're all still animating. So the tails are going, as you can see there. Tail fins are going, sorry, you should say there. They're not dogs. Um, and we can do some cool stuff. So we've got this... Um, uh, random time scale so we can hit this and what it'll do is it'll mean that some fish will uh, animate more quickly than others so um, they'll be kind of more enthusiastic as, as they were we can add some random scale to these if you want to um, uh, and there's a cool trick we can do um, with um, user velocity and simulated time and if I check both of these then what will happen is when the fish uh, is moving quickly the animation will happen more quickly and when the fish is moving slowly the animation will move more slowly and the multiplier for that is time scale um, and because I think if I turn the grid on I'm quite a large scale here so I'm going to need it to multiply this down by a very low value to get the kind of the, the kind of effect so you can see they're actually still flipping like mad so maybe I need something even lower um, yeah so that's done Actually, I think <laughs> maybe my scene scale is just too big. Um, yeah, so there. Yeah, okay. So you can see them. Uh, I don't know if actually you can see them in the video. Uh, but their kind of tails are flipping and at different speeds, depending on kind of what they're doing. All right. So that may or may not be the kind of thing that you're after. Um, so one little adjustment. They're still kind of, they're not following as enthusiastically as I would like them to. So I'm just going to hit, uh, change the um, attraction strength up to, attraction strength up to nine. And then we'll hit play, maybe just turn it down a touch. Cool. So that is basically what what we're after. Um, so uh, that's a kind of little simple school of fish for, you know, medium background stuff um, in a scene. And we're done. So in the Play Blast, I also had Hardware Frog turned on. Um, I, I tend to get asked lots of questions about what's going on with the viewport. So if I, um, in my demo, so if I add a plane underneath this, make it quite large, and then I turn on hardware fog, like so. And then inside the viewport 2 settings, I go down to hardware fog. I can set like a, I can set a start and end distance for this, like this, and then you can change the color, make it kind of, wah, horrendous, like that. Murky blue if you want. And then as the animation happens, they can come in and out of the fog. So you can see them just receding there into the fog and then coming back out. So that's how you do hardware fog. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, so there you go. There's our school of fish and hope you find it useful. Oh, I should say, I should one, one more thing. Uh, this is a mesh and this is uh, the mesh flight node is a simulation. So when you come to render this, you're going to want to either alembic this out or some kind of geometry cache. Um, assuming you're going to distribute this over uh, rendering over several computers, just so that each computer knows where everything should be at each time. So yeah, so once you're finished and you're finalized and you're happy with the animation or whatever, just alembic it out or do a geometry cache or make a Vero proxy or a Arnold stand in or whatever you want to do um, and then render that instead. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, let me know if you've got any questions.